Hi Chosen Few Expats, welcome back. And if you're new to our channel, thank you for joining us. My name is Alonzo. Panama just made some massive, massive changes to their Friendly Nations visa process. And we're gonna tell you all about that in this video. Okay, so just within the last day, there's been some major, major breaking news concerning Panama's Friendly Nations Visa Program. Uh, today is May the 21st, 2021. So on May 20th, 2021, Panama's Migration Chief announced some changes to the program that are massive. These are dealing with the economic tie that is a requirement as part of that program for uh, getting your permanent residency in Panama. Currently, the ways that you gain an economic tie is through a $5,000 bank deposit plus $2,000 for each dependent. And then also, uh, you have to establish a Panama Corporation. These are things that maybe the Panama Corporation may cost like in the $1,200, $1,300 range to establish. So you do those two things that establishes your economic tie to Panama. You can then apply and uh, get permanent residency. But uh, in another 89 days since this uh, new rule just came into play yesterday, so in another 89 days, those requirements are going to change. Um, one of those things that you're going to have to do to establish an economic tie, you can do it either one or two ways. You can have a, uh, get a work contract with a Panamanian company. Um, so that is going to be a very, very difficult proposition for a lot of people. Um, you know, as we covered in our how to get a job in Panama video and how to get a work permit in Panama video, Panama in the past has stated that there's about 25 to 30 professions that they're saving specifically for Panamanians. So it's not clear to me, um, it's a question that I have for my immigration lawyer, but at the time of this recording, it's not clear to me um, whether Panama is easing those restrictions since you now have to be able to get a work contract with a Panamanian company. So in my case, say if I were an engineer, I'd have to get an engineering contract uh, to work with a company. Um, when Panama has said in the past that engineering is one of the uh, items on the list that they were reserving for Panamanians. So it makes it a very, very difficult proposition. Um, and then even in addition to that, like we said in other videos with working um, or planning to work in Panama, the salaries are going to be much lower than what you're used to in the U.S., Canada, or Europe. But that is one way you can establish uh, that economic tie going forward um, after the next 89 days, um, which is August the 18th is going to be the last day that you can apply under the current rules. Okay, the second, the second requirement that they have for establishing this economic tie is a $200,000 real estate purchase. So this again is big, big news because in the past, this has not been a requirement. Folks have been able to come down if they want um, get to rent. If you want to move around different parts of the country, you can get a six month rental, three month rental, kind of be flexible, move around. Um, if you're applying for the Friendly Nations visa now, Panama is basically making you commit to purchasing real estate, at least $200,000 worth of real estate. Um, now, while these requirements are much more difficult than they've been in the past it's still a lot easier to get this residency than it is in a lot of other countries okay it's just that the requirements that they had before were like really really super easy like layup easy um so now it's, it's no longer that easy it's still not that difficult but it does require more of a financial uh commitment because even now in a lot of other countries you know you may have to deposit one hundred fifty thousand dollars you know, and all that stuff and like in one in one fell swoop uh, to get residency. So even if you're purchasing a property, $200,000, you're looking at about a 25 to 30% down payment, still a substantial lot of money, a lot more money um, than you would have to put out as, uh, as compared to the current process uh, with the Friendly Nations visa. Also, one of the changes that's coming along with this is that one of the countries, I think there were about 48 countries on the list for the Friendly Nations. Um, Taiwan has been dropped from that list as a result of, uh, of these new rules. This comes as no surprise uh, to me because as we pointed out um, in our Panama Economic Update and New Cruise Port video, in June 2017, 
Panama cut off diplomatic relations with Taiwan in favor of diplomatic relations with China. Uh, they actually had a company called China Harbor Engineering Company to complete the dredging work on the new cruise port at Port de Amador in Panama City. They completed that dredging work in August of 2018. The cruise port is basically near complete, complete or near complete, just waiting for things to open up um, here post-COVID. Um, that's going to be a big, big boom to the economy in Panama. So you're going to have a lot of passengers that are going to be able to now spend some time in Panama City, uh, whereas before they were maybe just cruising through on the canal or they had to dock in Cologne and drive down to Panama City for the day if they wanted to. But this is going to be a lot, be a lot better uh, for Panama's economy. So uh, they actually made that deal with China. So in doing so, of course, since China thinks they pretty much own Taiwan, they pretty much denounced Taiwan. So um, you kind of expected this to happen if they were going to make some changes to the Friendly Nations Visa Program. It's no surprise that they would drop uh, Taiwan from that. So um, as we mentioned in that video, when you look at it, China has basically one-fifth of the world's population. You're talking about 1.4 billion people of the world's 7.8 billion people in the world's second largest economy. So it's a situation with Panama where they're like, hey, Taiwan, you know, you guys are cool. You know, it's been great. It's fun and everything, but, um, you know, the, the economic um, <clears throat> future and prospects with China, you know, is far greater. Um, so they're starting to kick off some projects with China. So, like I said, there's no surprise uh, there. So back to the changes with the Friendly Nations visa. If you've already applied, um, these changes will not impact you if your application is already in process. If you apply within the next 89 days, that is up to August the 18th of 2021, then you can come in, still come in the program underneath the, the current economic tie, which I mentioned is the $5,000 bank deposit plus $2,000 for each dependent and establishing a Panama Corporation. So as long as you apply within the next 89 days, you're good. After that, you know, you gotta, you know, it's time to look for a job or, or do some house hunting. And, um, Panama, I think, implemented that because uh, there is a large availability, a large, a large inventory, excuse me, of homes and condos available here. So when a lot of people did start moving to Panama, you know, they built a lot of homes, built a lot of condos, expecting for expats to come, and they did. A lot of those expats are retirees that came in under the Pensionado program. So a lot of folks do come in with the mentality, those folks come in with the mentality of, of usually wanting to buy a home. Now you're getting more into a lot of younger people that maybe not quite retirement age, um, such as myself that want to come in and that they're not quite at retirement age yet. Uh, a lot of those people were not necessarily looking to buy a house. So what this is going to do is kind of, kind of force the hand of a lot of those people. And uh, it looks like Panama is trying to um, get some of that that housing inventory that they have available, um, get more purchases going and things like that because houses can't sit on the market for quite a while here. It is definitely a buyer's market. Um, you, can, you can buy a house, you can negotiate and all that, but when you go to sell it, you know, it, it, typically it's gonna take you quite a while to sell it. So I think uh, what the government has in mind there is to use up some of that inventory through the people who are wanting to come in as expats. The other major, major, major change with this program is that uh, when you apply, that residency is good for two years. So it's a two-year temporary residency, which is a huge change because under the current rules of the Friendly Nations visa, when you apply and you are accepted, you automatically, automatically have permanent residency. So uh, it's a big, big change with this. You have to apply. Then after two years, you're going to apply again. And at that point, they will give you permanent residency. So um, that's pretty much the update. So with that, uh, if you have not applied, if you plan on coming, if you plan on moving, you know, you got to speed up your, you know, kind of speed up your timeline here, which is kind of what we mentioned to you all before when we gave the last Friendly Nations visa update back in November of 2020. And we mentioned that there were some changes that were likely coming, that there would be some amount of notice given. I think that the immigration lawyers in Panama were hoping that that notice would be more around the six-month, 180-day notice. 
um, type of range, but apparently the government has decided they can just bring this out within the next 90 days. So that's the deal. If you plan on coming, you better get on it, get your FBI reports, get your stuff uh, apostled, and um, you know, get your immigration lawyer, get things rolling if you plan on moving to Panama under the Friendly Nations visa. Again, if you're coming in as a pensionado, if you're retired, there's no changes there, you're still good. So um, with that, uh, if you like our content, please hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you can be notified of our future videos. Leave your comments down below, and we'll see you all next time. Hopefully with better news, we'll see you all next time.